there are several obvious reasons why U.S. software vendors grow faster and become bigger than the European vendors. Market size, general acceptance of innovation, which is a common attitude in the U.S., and the Small Business Act. Year after year, the Truffle 100 reveals that the vendors view the SBA as the number one set of public measures that could stimulate the software industry. Some member countries and their politicians argue that they can't implement a national SBA because it would violate European regulation. What are your views on the matter and what solutions would you propose to stop this vicious circle and promote a European SBA? Now, as you know, the U.S. Small Business Act provides for a share of the federal public procurements to be reserved for small businesses. That is a preferential regime, and that would raise concern as to its compatibility not only with the procurement directives, I think about the breach of the principle of equal treatment, but also with the EC treaty. Moreover, it might result in an arbitrary decision that would not fit with the needs in all sectors of the economy. The European Small Business Act, which was approved by the European Council in December 2008, takes a different approach. It is an overall strategy to promote entrepreneurship, to anchor the think small first principle in policy making from regulation to public service, and to promote SMEs growth through innovation, better access to markets, internationalization, and so on and so forth. Now, the Commission invites member states to pursue their efforts to facilitate SMEs access to public procurement markets. The established code of best practices can be one of the tools to further simplify the procurement procedures because it can make use of e-procurement, divide contracts into lots, or adapt the requirements to SME needs. However, a key factor for the growth of innovative SMEs in ICT is the existence of a single EU-wide market for innovative ICT-based products and services. Even as ME develops today a new ICT for health system, it will have to go through 27 certification procedures to be able to sell it across the EU. And it would need only one certification to sell it in China, to sell it in the US. And this explains to a large extent the confinement of many of our SMEs to local and national markets and their incapacity to grow or to access capital. Now, one way of addressing this issue is through large-scale pilot projects involving national authorities for health, inclusion, transport, for example, that work on testing and making interoperable innovative solutions across Europe. And this is what we support today in the ICT part of the Competitiveness and Innovation Programme. It has around 120 million per year, and first results are promising. We see an increasing willingness and engagement of national authorities to work together on opening their market. That will be essential for having a real internal market. The European vendors are too small also because they are undercapitalized. They need more venture capital and they need access to the stock markets. What are your plans to bolster venture capital and access to capital markets? Here the Commission has developed specific financial instruments under this uh, competitiveness and innovation program. They tend to support equity investment. So the 2007-2013 program has several schemes and a budget of over 1 billion to facilitate access of loans, equity finance, where market gaps have been identified. About 50% of this amount is dedicated to finance high growth companies. The high growth and innovative SME facility window under the financial instruments aims to improve access to finance for the start-up and for the growth of SMEs and the investment in innovation activities. Now all these EU instruments target companies in different phases of their life cycle. Seed, start-up, expansion, business transfer, 
and they also support investment in technological development, innovation and technology transfer and of course a cross-border expansion of business activities. They are managed by the cooperation with venture capital funds and concerning venture capital the Commission has worked with the Member States towards the mutual recognition of national regulatory frameworks for venture capital. The goal has been to move towards a truly pan-European venture capital market by working with experts to remove the cross-border obstacles which, as you know, hamper venture capital investments, including double taxation of venture capital funds and investors. Now, regarding stock markets, the Commission is seeking to facilitate cross-border listings in stock exchanges to remove obstacles to the use of competing clearing and settlement systems and to apply common rules to trading. Here as well, the achievement of a single market for ICT innovations is essential because only then can we improve the attractiveness of European SMEs to investors. And the growth capacity of companies depends on their potential market size. The EU ICT market is the largest worldwide, but it is fragmented. And the support that we offer today to large-scale pilots in the ICT part of the CIP as well as our work on the regulatory framework for electronic communications and for services aim at opening up this market for innovations. It's slow, but first results are promising, and we see really an increasing willingness and engagement of national authorities in order to work together in order to open their markets. Commissioner Redding, your extensive and in-depth knowledge of the IT industry are of primary in importance for the sector. Um, the IT companies uh, rely a lot on the actions that you can take, and you can take a lot of actions. Thank you for your support for the fourth year in a row and for all the actions that you intend to take in the coming years. Thank you, Commissioner.